The uh, objectives of SWIFT response are to make sure that <clears throat> the alliance can very rapidly uh, mass whatever force is required to defend any other NATO ally. And I think we've been able to demonstrate that with the integration of both uh, the United Kingdom forces, uh, Estonian forces here in Estonia at the tactical level, and then also down in Romania at the uh, division level of integrating in over 14 different nations, again, to show that resolve and capability across the entire Atlantic Resolve footprint. Well, the first thing is uh, all of these relationships have been built over many years now. Um, and you can see that. We all, we all know each other. We all understand how each other thinks. And now it's just about making sure that from the tactical up to, in my case, the division level, we have true interoperability so that if, if required, we could very fast and efficiently defend and execute operations. A, a joint forcible entry is a, an operation that penetrates an enemy uh, defensive area. It doesn't have to be just airborne assault. It could also be by rotary wing or other means. Um, but uh, it's really about understanding your adversary and setting the conditions so that you can deliver that force to give uh, either change the geometry, the pace, or the speed, and give a, a, a dilemma to our, any adversary. So just at this portion of SWIFT response, uh, we dropped in a little over 600 uh, paratroopers, but most importantly, we brought with us the capability uh, to, to defend against any adversary that is out there. So it's those very unique capabilities uh, that only an airborne division can bring, we were able to very rapidly uh, get down to the ground and put into the fight very quickly. About a month prior to this, we had team live fire going on, and uh, this was the first time squad live fire in this training event as well. But that's dependent on the way. Uh, so we've been, uh, we've jumped twice uh, with the Americans already. Uh, that's been pretty good. Uh, I've had quite good landings. Some lads uh, have been as lucky, uh, but I suppose that's you know that's the risk you take uh, jumping out. But uh, yeah, we've we've done good back in uh, back in the camp to be able to prepare for this. So obviously now we're here, so we're looking for the next task. It was soft, hard landing. It was soft for me at least. Exciting. Exciting. It was a long flight. Definitely yeah, for, <laughs> for a lot of us, it's the first time kind of flying out that distance oh. and jumping out. We've got a lot of kit as well, but well, yeah, it, was, it was good. Had a great time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's always great when you're out of the plane. In the plane's a little uncomfortable. Once you're out the door, the adrenaline's pumping. It's always a good time. Uh, yeah, I mean, you've got all that weight on your on your back, on your front. As soon as you go out, you know, you're, you're weightless. And you're just, you know, checking around as soon as you hit the ground. You get your stuff together. You're kind of getting on with it. So, yeah. Got to be out. It's definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity. I really appreciate it. Now it's going to be better. It's been good. It's been, most of us have done the first time out of country. So like, when you get to work with someone like the Americans, especially like, given our history, it was only really the 82nd Special Crash Regiment itself. So I think it's good to uh, have the ties. Keep, keep, keep relationships close as they were, were back in 75 years ago, like World War II. So, good American experience.